welcome back. So in the last episode, we installed the KData KDFI 1.4 plug and play ECU. Today we're gonna to toy around with a bit of tuning. Um, we'll show you how to hook up uh, Tuner Studio and everything. Um, we'll play with the rev limiter. We try and imitate a cam, like a bit of a ghost cam, and even like, we'll try to do a burble tune. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. and have fun. Most of all, last video we plugged, today we're gonna to play. All right. Oh. Tuna Studio. We're gonna to go to tunastudio.com and we're gonna go over to products and go to Tuna Studio MS. Now you can download Tuna Studio MS Lite free and it'll do all the basics for you, but I just registered for the full version just because there's a lot more tunability there. So it's well worth it. It's got like auto tune and all that kind of stuff. Quick download, pick your operating system, obviously. I'm on a, I'm on a Mac, download it. All right, now registration's pretty straightforward. There's heaps of different options. I'm just going with the basic Tuna Studio MS. Uh, it's a one-off payment, which is awesome. No subscription. And obviously put your name and email. I'm not gonna register because I've already done it, but it'll, I think from memory it'll send you a code and then you just add that to your Tuna Studio and then you're all good to go. So once that's done, open Tuna Studio. I'm ready to rock. Now it's broken up into projects. I've obviously had a bit of a toy around already, so I've got some projects in here, but we'll start a new project because um, this will be part of also connecting it up. Create a new project. So create a new project. We'll call this Virtus Builds Tuning mayhem and um, that's just a directory where that'll be saved so from there we go to the firmware ignitions on we've plugged our usb cable from the kdfi into the computer and we go to detect it should pick it up all right once it's found one go accept there we go we found the firmware um you can put in project description so you know what you've done in that tune or whatever click next all right now we got for the current setup we still got narrowband sensor. I'm in the land of Oz, so we're gonna run Celsius and we're gonna leave all the rest as default. Tested the, the port with the firmware, it says successful, we should be good to go. All right, the next tab that'll open up will just show you the, um, the dashboard you want. Um, I'm just running with the default just because it's pretty easy to read, um, but there's heaps of cool different ones. Some of them are pretty wild. <laughs> that one's got a skull on it. So you can change that to your liking, but I'm just gonna run with the default one just so everybody's on the same page. Finish, there we go. We're all connected. All right, now to the fun stuff. We've got basic load settings, control algorithm, alpha n which we established last episode we got all the fuel settings so we got v table we'll, we'll probably muck around with this to make it sound like it's cammed we got ignition tables which you can do the same thing we got startup and idle we got boost and advance so i can go more into depth on this if anyone wants there is a lot of tutorials out there not so much for the kdfi ecu specifically but for how to use tuna studio so but today is just more about cause and effect, just trying to change things and see how they work. So let's play with the rev limiter. Fire this baby up. Go to basic load settings, rev limiter. As you can see here, we got hard rev limit set to 6,000, pretty standard. I got my apprentices to test that for me. You don't need the brake, just the accelerator. All right, you have a go, Leo. What does this one do? What does this one do? That's the clutch. That's to change gears. They probably won't exist when you're older. Send it. <laughs> I personally don't want to go higher than that. Some people do. Um, the torque curve doesn't really get any higher beyond that with these, so kind of i just don't want to risk damage for the sake of that but if you want to you just bump this up <laughs> there you go it won't let you do eight thousand let's see how much we can go seven thousand seven nine hundred there you go you can go seven thousand nine hundred do not do that do not do that and some people like to bump them up to seven but as an example we'll put in we'll make it cut in at four now, once you make a change like this, you'll see down the bottom, it'll say burn. You have to burn it onto the ECU. Once you click it, you'll hear the engine stall for a sec when it just has a change. See? 
and now we're set to 4,000. Let's see if it kicks in at 4,000. Let's be ridiculous and put it on 2,000. <laughs> now this does have the ability for launch control, which you can, which will do things like that. It'll set your rev limit at a certain point until you take off. But yeah, pretty cool. If you want to play with the limiter, want to bump it up or bump it down, pretty easy. All right, verbal tune. So, basically, you want combustion later in the cycle so it spits it out the exhaust. So traditionally, that noise, the, the verbal tune would be for like high performance things like rally cars. They would retard the fuel and the spark when off the throttle to do things like keep turbos spinning and stuff like that. So then it's still spooled up when you get go to get back on throttle. A few other reasons. Most people do it these days just for the sound. Most tunes these days you hear on the streets are just ridiculous. Don't know, maybe I'm just getting old. Anyway, refer back to Tuna Studio and it's all about ignition. Open this baby up. All right, we've got the ignition table. On the Y axis, up and down, we've got the ignition load or throttle position, basically. Like up here, you've got 100, 100%. And then on the X axis, we've got RPM. So 700, 900, this is around idle. And then you got all the way up to 6,000 up here. This oval here is a trace. When I, when I start it up, you'll see it moving around. That's sort of just showing where it's floating, where it's floating around. So this whole bottom row basically is your like off throttle conditions. So this is where you want the verbal sound basically, because you want it when it comes off the throttle. You don't really want retarded ignition anywhere else. In, the sp in some circumstances you do, but it, with what we're doing here, you don't. So this is all our advance. So basically the spark is firing just before top dead center to give it like a bit of a head start. We want it on the opposite end. It's a bit after everything's happened and it's gonna let a bit out the exhaust. So we'll fire it up. And you can see the trace move. You give it a rev, you can see the trace moving again. And then on off throttle deceleration, you'll see it just sounds like a normal car, right? Let's say we get this cell, highlight all these cells, and then we give them a negative value. So like a retarded timing condition. So make a negative five. So yeah, it'll even work at a top dead center setup. Easy as that. There you go, pretty easy really. So the real skill in tuning is tuning for performance, which takes a long time to master, which we're not doing anything like that today. We're just playing around, learning how the car works, learning how the tunes work. And having said that, you always wanna have some sort of restore point. So you don't wanna stuff it up beyond recognition. That's why I made this specific project, Virtus Builds Tuning Mayhem, because we can always revert back to not a, a not messed up one. Now the best way to do a ghost cam would be someone's whipper snipping. There's always something, a noisy bird or something. Okay, so the closest way to imitate like a cam with big overlap is through variable valve timing. Even though this has um, Vanos, which is variable valve timing, unfortunately, the KDFI doesn't have the capability of Vanos adjustment. It's based on an MS2, which doesn't have that capability. I think MS3 does. That's not what I got it for anyway. I got it for the inbuilt wideband and the map sensor capability for a future 
video. So the next best thing I guess we can do is make the engine hunt a bit. Hunting means it's, it, in layman's terms, it's, it's hunting for its right sort of idle. Basically everything in the running system is the computer going backwards and forwards trying to keep everything in the right place. So, so basically an O2 sensor's got just constantly going above and below uh, like stoichiometric ratio. Injectors are a pulse width on and off. Same with running and like your fuel and your VE tables and everything. It's all just keeping it in that right spot. So what we want to do is make it more extreme. So it's making bigger swings, I guess. All right, so this is how I'm going to try and do it. We're going to go to ignition setting, ignition table. Now I'm thinking I want to try and make it hunt between these two cells, 700 and 900. Let's try top dead center and see what happens. All right, we're getting there. Not quite. It sounds a bit more like it just got a misfire at idle. <laughs> so, we'll go neg five. Not much better, we'll go negative seven. Try negative 10. All right, we can't go any more than negative 10. All right, it's having an effect, but not quite that hunting effect that we want at idle. So we can't retard the timing any more than that. So, we'll go to the VE table in the same cell and we'll trick it into thinking it's getting a li little bit less fuel as well. That's better. That's a bit more of what I was after. Timing advance has taken having a big swing and we're getting that hunting effect. It's a bit ugly. Doesn't sound as good as if you did it with variable valve timing, but it still works. Now, am I gonna run with any of these settings? Hell no. But they're fun things to try to dip your toes in tuning. Like especially with the burble tune, catalytic converters, they'll be gone and they're kind of considered a bit lame these days anyway. <laughs> Everyone just went too far with it. It was okay to have a little bit of a crackle and pop and now they're like shotguns going off in the street. Uh, but anyway, that's not what I got the KDA 5 for. I got it for future project. And when I come to the end of that, I'm gonna leave it to the, the smart people who know how to tune well and get them to dial it right in for me. Um, I know a little bit, but I'm not an expert. Anyway, I'll leave you with that. If you have any questions or critiques, leave them in the comments. I'll be back next year, and we got some exciting stuff planned for next year. Have a safe holiday. Love yous. See you in the next one.